She's the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York. Follow her voice, a straight dog is nice. She's the pushy broad from the Bronx, oh yeah. Don't be surprised if you want to listen twice. Make decisions, find the right choice. Know yourself better, find your own voice. It's okay if you need help today, because everybody needs a little push. From the pushy broad from the Bronx, New York. Welcome, Transformation Talk Network listeners. My name is Ellen Stewart, and I am the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. Welcome to my show, Recovery Recharged, where we share advice and support from experts in addiction and recovery. I am so delighted that you are with me today because we have a topic that really involves every single one of us, whether you are in recovery or whether you are a loved one or whether you are struggling in relationships or whether you're struggling to be a parent, whatever you are doing, I know that you will get the information that you need because this podcast is about setting boundaries. And I love the title of it. It's called Lines of Engagement with Professional Certified Coach, Terry Webb. And let me tell you a little something about her. She's an amazing woman. She is a certified professional coach, and she is dedicated to recover and restore the lives of others to a place of balance and wholeness. She is a 21-year retired Air Force veteran, and we thank her for her service. And she continues to uphold the core values of integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all that we do. In her professional and private life, she has a background in communication, education and training, and HR management. She's also a licensed missionary, and she works alongside her husband in the ministry, and they are currently residing in Grand Prairie, Texas. The Pushy Board from the Bronx and Recovery Recharged is delighted to welcome Terry Webb. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, and thank you so much, Ellen, for having me on your show. It really is a pleasure. It is my pleasure to see you today. And and I'm very, very glad that you chose this topic. So tell us on a personal level, what does setting boundaries mean to you personally? Personally, it means protection. What do you mean protection? Protection in the way it protects us. As, As a Christian and the word of God being my baseline for my life, it tells us to guard our hearts, you know, because out of the heart, everything flows, you know, my behavior, my character. So in order to maintain the character and the behavior that's in line with my beliefs, I have to set boundaries. I see. Can you give us a personal example of maybe a time when you've established a boundary that significantly improved your relationship? And tell us a little bit about that. Yes, and that what comes to mind is um, a friendship, a, a, actually a few friendships that I had that over the years, I seemed to become the emotional dumping ground for everyone, that they would just call me. So I was a coach before I was actually coaching because, and it, it wasn't being reciprocated. You know, even if I initiated the phone call, it was t- tend to their emotional <laughs> dilemmas of what they had going on. So I had to communicate that. I had to set the boundaries that, no, this had to be give and take. And once I communicated and set those boundaries, it actually changed the dynamics of the friendship and actually made it more enjoyable for both of us. So what you're saying is when you set a boundary, you're actually speaking up. Yes. And telling somebody that this is not acceptable because of a certain reason. And in the case of you and your friends, you were saying, look, you're dumping all this stuff on me all the time and I'm here for you, but you won't let me do the same for you. Is that what happened? Exactly. Exactly. And eventually, if if not, you will become resentful. Yes, right? Because you're just like a sponge and you're not able to let that go, right? It yes. just fills up and fills up and you're not able to, to let it go. Exactly. 
So how do you relate as a, from a coaching perspective, how do you relate boundaries with what you think good mental and emotional well-being is like? I would say <clears throat> they go hand in hand. Everything ties together. Um, and with the boundaries, you have to have a clear guideline of your limitations and responsibilities. And when you develop those limitations and responsibilities, that area, it brings balance to your life. And with balance, it creates that mental and emotional stability for you. So what you're saying and what all of us understand, especially in recovery, is that if I don't speak up and take care of myself first and allow myself to feel emotionally strong and emotionally secure by setting my boundaries, then I can actually spin out. And many people have relapsed because they haven't set boundaries. Have you seen that in, in your life? Yes, because they will set not so much unrealistic, but temporary boundaries. So I need this, but understanding that boundaries are created throughout life. You know, they may evolve or they may have to be adjusted, but you always need boundaries for your life. And that that helps you not to snap at the end of the day because you're not taking it all in and not being able to release it. You're not absorbing it. Can you give us some examples of what a boundary is, like some of the specific things that have come to you or the things that you talk to your clients about? What do people actually say to set up boundaries and why? You know, some people have the misconception that boundaries, you know, are binding. They're, they're just strict, you know, very restrictive. But honestly, boundaries brings freedom. And what I mean by that, it's like a budget. If I'm trying to have a budget because I'm trying to attain something or, you know, achieve a certain balance in my account, I'm going to do some things. I'm going to set guidelines for me to actually, the budget, fulfill that. And in, in essence, when I set the budget because I'm saving for this, it gives me the freedom because now I have the resources to do what I please. The same thing with boundaries. It brings freedom to achieve the goal that you're set for yourself. So even though we're kind of building a wall of protection around ourselves, yes, mm -hmm. and so do not cross this line, it's because we understand that that's the freedom that it brings us, enough to say, don't encroach on me, right? Yes. Don't take more from me than I am willing to give. Yes, exactly. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important to set boundaries, right? And you're saying the number one reason is so that we can regain our personal freedom. Exactly. And, and, that, and sometimes we don't realize that, the need. Exactly, because we think if we're setting boundaries, then what? If we're setting boundaries, then I know my, a lot of my clients think, well, that just that means that I don't care. It means that I'm not, you know, that I'm not helpful. It means somebody's going to think that that I don't like them or I don't want to be with them or I don't want to work with them. So how do you answer your clients when they say that? Yeah, because that's a common misconception that, oh, it's selfish. It's selfish to set boundaries. But in and actual all the truth about it, setting boundaries help you become responsible, responsible for you. And in turn, it makes other people become accountable or responsible for themselves, which brings balance to the relationship. Exactly. I always say there's a difference between caring and caretaking. Yes. Right? I like that. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? So you see everybody out there, boundaries are healthy. Yes, especially very. when moms and dads try to set boundaries with their kids. Yes. Did, do you find did you find that was difficult with your kid? It was. It is difficult because you love them so much and you want the best. And so you 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 provide, you overdo it. And I saw that it it took some adjustment as they continue to grow. But I remember one um, particular time, my son, the youngest son, he had to walk to school. It's only a, like a five, 10 minute walk to school because there was no bus since it was that close. 
And initially it started out, he was late a few times and I would drive him. But it became a habit that I had to realize, no, because it was, you know, infringing on the things that I needed to do. So I had to say, put that responsibility on him, make him accountable for getting to school on time. And after the first couple of times, he pouted, well, I'm going to be late. I still allowed him to grow because that's what we're doing. We're allowing them to grow when we step back and work within our boundaries. Right. So instead of being his personal driver, (laughs) 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 because they get to expect it, right? They say, okay, I don't have to worry about getting up. Mom's going to take me to school. It'll be okay. Look, I work with high school kids as well and college kids as well. And they talk about the fact that, especially in high school, parents call me and say, my child won't get up with the alarm. I don't care if a (laughs) bomb goes off in that room. He's not getting up. Okay. And I turn around and say, I need you to stop worrying about it. I know parents would bang on the door. My mother would bang on the door, get up, get up, get up. And then I would wait for that subconsciously. Right? Ah, yeah. I would wait for it. And if it didn't come, it was my permission to sleep, right? It was my permission not to get up. But when mom finally said to me, I'm not doing this anymore because I'm the bad guy and I have to bang on your door, I started getting up for myself. Yes. And we also teach kids that actions have consequences, right? Yes. What you do and whether they're good actions or bad actions, actions, they have good consequences Consequences. or bad, right? Exactly. Okay. So you also talked about boundaries, deepening the connections with others rather than pushing them away, right? Don't you think that's a real thing? It, 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 It is a real thing because there's no guesswork. You you know, the the expectations are clear, you know, and it it lessens the room for you or someone else to be offended because I already know. And it it allows, like I said, the expectations are clear and it's my expectations because my boundaries have been set. You know what you're getting. Okay. And sometimes people need to re- be reminded of that too, right? Yes. And sometimes we need to be reminded. How many times do we think we're going to go overboard, right? How many yes. times do we think, well, we have to pull back a little bit because, you know, in recovery, we say, not my circus, not my monkeys, right? <laughs> what okay. belongs to me and what doesn't belong to me, right? Yes. And it, so- it helps you to stay in your lane. Right. Staying in our lane. Absolutely. So let's just say, let's think about some of the things that people will say in terms of boundaries, because people get afraid, right? How do I tell my friends that that I don't want to be involved in this? Or how do I tell my friend that they're encroaching on my boundary? What would you suggest? What kind of words did you have to use personally in your life? Well, first of all, loving, (laughs) loving, you know, even though you can be direct, but still be direct with love because I love this person. I'm going to, I know how to handle it and I'm going to handle them gently, but also be assertive to the point that, you know, this is something that's deep with me, a feeling, and I want you to respect this. So I'm going to maybe in a way. I love you, but at this time in my life, this is not being productive. This is not helping me. This is actually hurting me. Okay. I'm achieving the goal that I set for my life. There you go. So that's one way. And that's great. Also something like, um, I always say when I want to put a boundary up, I am sure that whatever decision you make will be right for you. Yes. Right. Yes, because boundaries are for you. Right. So I can turn around and say, Terry, I know you've got a lot going on. And I'm sure that whatever decision you make will be right for you. That's it. That means I don't have to have an opinion around it. I don't have to go there. I don't have to say anything more than I'm giving it back to you. And I trust that your decision will be the right one for you. Yes. And that's a part of staying in your lane. Absolutely. Which is really hard for the pushy broad most of the time. I can tell you. <laughs> it's hard it, for parents. 
it's really hard for parents to to do that because we're so used to giving advice and nurturing, but we have to understand that there comes a time where I'm parenting and where I'm mentoring. Give it yes. to you. And there's a big difference. And also coming from the position you're in, it's constantly practicing let go, let God with enough faith in trust in your children to make the right decision. Right decision, yes. Right? So do you think that sometimes, I know this comes up a lot, but sometimes do you think that people feel guilty when they set boundaries? Of course. How, how of come? course. I, I feel guilty sometimes, you know, even now to set boundaries because I'm like, oh my gosh, but they really need me. They really need this, you know, from me. But in the end, I have to think of the overall picture, the overall, the end game. I want them to be responsible for themselves. And I want to also be able to achieve the goal or whatever I'm trying to achieve by setting this boundary. And most of the time, especially with parents, with kids, I heard something the, the other day, I forgot where it came from. Some wonderful doctor on TikTok said something like, our mission in life is to make sure that our kids see us as extra, as superfluous, as almost insignificant, because we have to let them out of the nest. We have to let them grow. And we're just here to watch it and to say, great job you know, and realize that we've trained them and work with them well enough to do things on their own. They should not be dependent upon us. And that's what we do sometimes as parents. We make people, not just our children, codependent when we that's don't right. set boundaries. That's right. And that's because of partially because of our own codependence, would you say? Yes, exactly. All right. So when it comes to... um when it comes to personal situations, that's sometimes more difficult because it touches us in the heart and we feel a certain way. How do we find that it changes somewhat in the workplace? How about for you? What's the professional boundary setting? Okay, my background in the military, it was a little bit difficult because your objective is the mission. You know, it's not so much like in a relationship, in a personal relationship, because no matter what, the mission still had to go on. And it was important being, you know, in the Air Force that even if somebody failed to do something, you had to pick it back up. So it was almost not impossible, but a little bit different in setting boundaries there. I remember one um, instance, I was in a staff meeting and the commander, <laughs> he used some choice words. And that has always been a boundary for me, you know, how you, you speak to me. And after the meeting, he came and apologized. And he said, um, I noticed your face. I noticed your body language in the meeting. And he said, and I apologize because it's unprofessional. I didn't have to, to verbalize it, speak it, but he noticed it because he did, he infringed on that boundary that I had for my life. So sometimes, like I said, you have to speak, but sometimes it's different. Yes, I mean, sometimes <laughs> your facial expressions and the way you, the way you stand, the way you back up, the way you, you know, the way you maybe fold your hands or whatever, you can show a disapproving or a shocking look like, please don't go any further, or that was insulting to me. You need to apologize even without you saying it, correct? Yes, yes. Yes. And in so, personal relationships, you more so can walk away versus yes, in a Yes, which you certainly can't do to your commanding officer. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would not go over well. But the same is true in business, too. I mean, you're, you know, you're in the ministry and you and you see, you know, your your husband's flock and and there are people all around. And I'm sure they ask you to do things. You're a minister's wife and you're very much involved. And I'm sure sometimes they push boundaries, right? And they're not personal. They're somewhat professional. So how do you get around this? How do you politely say, uh, go ahead, you can do this on your own, or I don't want to get involved. How does that happen? I had to learn to be okay saying no. No, I'm not going to be. I mean, and there are a lot of demands that are put on you in ministry. But I had to learn that if I don't say no, then I'm going to be begrudgingly <laughs> doing it. And 
that's not helpful for me. It's not helpful because then I can set up resentment in my heart that is not pleasing to God. So in order for me to stay pure, I'm going to tell you, no, I'm not going to be able to do that. Yes. And I would say that it's not only not pleasing to God, but it stays there and it's not pleasing to you. It's yes. like you've eaten something and it's given you indigestion and it's not going away. Way. <laughs> Right. Like it's just that, yeah. never going away. So, I mean, I, I, I see that. And when I talk to my, when I talk to my clients and turn around and say to them, it takes a very strong person to say, yes, I can, but sometimes an even stronger person to say, no, I can't. Yes. Right. Yes. No. And I, I can respect you saying no to me because I would rather for you to say no, and I can find someone else for you to say yes. And then you, you drop it. You don't do it. Right. So that's a thing. We can either drop it because we don't, you know, want to do it, or we can do it begrudgingly and not do a good enough job because we're upset that we said yes to begin with, or yes. we can do a great job and then resent that person for asking us, right? <laughs> yes. So either way, either it's way. Not a great situation. <laughs> no what? But I love that you say, you know, I love that you say that you can't see it with love and you can't be loving in your heart around it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing that when I talk to my clients about being in a relationship, there is compromise and there's sacrifice. Sacrifice means you lose your identity in the process, which is not a good thing to have. Compromise means you are okay with it because at least half of what you wanted is something that you actually wanted as opposed to sacrificing where there's nothing here that you wanted, which means you do everything out of resentment and you lose your identity in the process. So that's that's a very important reason to hold on to boundaries, isn't it? It is. It is. So we really develop some more self-awareness through this process. Would you comment on that? Yes, because self-awareness is knowing who you are. It's almost answering those questions, who, what, when, where, why, when you were, you know, in grade school, you know, you ask, who am I? What am I trying to see, achieve? And what boundaries do I need to set to achieve these? So you're making yourself aware of your responsibilities, your limitations, everything about you and what you need to do to be fruitful in life to be successful. Right, right. Now here, here that we are in the 21st century where social media, especially in the last five years, 10 years, only that amount of time, everybody is showing everybody everything. It started with what I'm eating for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? That was a big thing, all right? <laughs> <Yes>. After people <laughs> got over that, and some people still haven't gotten over that, all right? But everybody has to post everything about everything. How do you think that affects setting personal boundaries? I think it has blurred the lines of personal boundaries. Because like you say, everything is out there and there's no sense of privacy anymore. So you set yourself up with <laughs> the thought of anybody can comment. Anybody can record. Anybody can post, you know, and you set it up that you know, at the time, at one time, cyberbullying was such a big thing because it this, yeah, it is freedom, freedom of, of speech. I can say what I want to on social media with no lines, you know, a boundary lines being crossed. That's what they think anyway, but you do still cross boundaries, even in social media, you know, you and not knowing the people personally enables you to just do what you want to do because there's no personal connection. Exactly. And because you put so much out there and so many young people put more out there than they should, they've crossed their own personal boundaries, right? Yes. It's been an assault on themselves. They've given away more than they should because it's always misinterpreted and you can't take it back. So even if you have changed over time and evolved, a lot of people sometimes won't remember that and they'll hold on to what was and take that at face value. And then sometimes you'll be judged for what you have, what you have said or what you have posted and people misinterpret what you actually mean sometimes. 
Yes. So that's a very big way to hold on to your personal boundaries and find that whatever you're posting and whatever you're doing, that you constantly make it true to your core values and what you actually feel. Yes, right. And not you're, you're giving someone else control over your life. There you go. That's exactly right. You don't want to give anybody else control over your life. Yes. So as a recovery coach, what do you teach in terms of boundaries? What are the most important things? To know yourself. Okay. That's the, the most, the, the key to know yourself and be consistent. Consistent with the boundaries that you, you said. Consistency is key in, in everything. Um, and also having the discipline to know <laughs> I need to enforce this. I need to stick to this no matter the consequences. Because like you said earlier, consequences, good or bad, will come with every choice you make. Understanding that with setting these boundaries, there are going to be consequences. There may be people who, who are upset, who don't support the boundaries that you set. And you have to be okay with that. You're right. As a recovery coach, tell us where to find you if we want to sign up and work with you. I'm in Grand Prairie, um, Texas, but you can contact me at rest, Restore Life Coach 2024 at gmail.com, or you can contact me on the line um, at 469-439-8378. Terry, it's so great to have you. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. This is Ellen Stewart, the Pushy Broad from the Bronx. If you need to reach me, go to pushybroadfromthebronx.com, sign up for a free consultation. I'll give you some more information about Terry. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. This is Ellen Stewart, the Pushy Broad from the Bronx, saying thanks for listening. And remember, everybody needs a little push. From the Pushy Broad from the Bronx, New York.